Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's Vindo with Robert Holmshead. Bob, good day to you. Um, happy end of October, I guess. What's on the menu for today? I know you got something percolating that uh, should be uh, should be of interest to our listeners. I hope so. I doubt it, but I hope so. Top of the morning to you, everybody. <clears throat> So, you know, I guess uh, there's a thing that, uh, you know, everybody's talking about, whether they're talking about it or not, about, they're thinking about, you know, what what's the next move? How do you uh, get your inventory rate? What are you thinking about buying? Everybody's paying in or underwear about buying. It's a few things that are very obvious to me. Um, you know, being a uh, quasi-historian, uh, while we're car dealers, while we develop uh, and operate the software, there's cer- certain things that, you know, pop out in your head. And um, one of our products is Head Start, which is our management system that does, you know, four or five of the largest wholesalers in the world. Uh, and we see data. And what we see is um, like real data, not like Fugazi stuff that, you know, like a, a market report or something has no relationship to the actual uh, characteristics of cars, where they came from, who the auctioneer was. All that. In other words, just, it's good information, but it's really not like I would call it the uh, acid washed where you actually know what what that you can rely on and here's what happens right so everybody's peeing in their underwear and um they don't want to buy they, they got aged inventory days in market is skyrocketing as anybody could see you see it in AccuTrade. if you're not trade you you go and take a look at it you can actually look at anybody's inventory you can go into some of the big publicly traded companies and see their inventory is so far out of whack it's incomprehensible like it's never been anything close to it before i ain't going to name names but you, you can go in and see where you know uh, a, a large swath of their inventory is 183 days old so you know, publicly traded, it don't matter. You can overcome it. You can over talk it. You can do all sorts of things. Somebody with skin in the game that actually has their cash in in the cars, you know, not other people's money. Um, it's things you can't get over. So you, you can't get over it. You can't overlook it because when you actually need to face the music and start dancing, in other words, um, it it it's not like something you can just oh let's go have a drink. No, it goes right up your gazool and. As a result, it's it's real. It's not fake. You know, it's coming out of the pantalones. You dig it? And um, um, a couple of things that come out of that. One, as we watch, you know, thousands of transactions a week uh, on the live marketplace simulcast, um, what we can see is a reluctance, if not a an aversion to buyers like if there's 340 or 522 people online and there's no mmr on a car and the car is cheaper than a box of rocks nobody bids nobody bids nobody bids so when people say mmr is this mmr is that here's what mmr is it's not quite the same as somebody making an offer with a check attached to it but it's definitely something that we've all uh, learn to at least be one leg of a four-legged table when you want to build confidence in yourself, even though you wouldn't admit that you need confidence because you already know everything. You don't need anybody to tell you what to do. You love to lean on that to actually see uh, how far off or how far wrong it happens to be. But when it's an NA, not 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 available, um, nobody bids, nobody bids, nobody bids. Now, what's that telling you? It's telling you that um, without a reference to something of somebody else did, and you could see it's 7,000 under MMR. It's bringing two Gs over MMR for some unknown reason. You're still using that as a, a, a reference. We obviously use AccuTrade as a, a, another little deeper dive into the VIN to understand what the car is worth and why we're saying what it is and what we would write a check for, not an opinion, a check. In other words, when you look at these items, What you wind up with is a lack of confidence of the basic buyer base. If you don't have MMR and a dealer won't bid, um, that means that they're um, walking on thin ice in their brain. You follow me? They don't want to make a mistake. They were already buried in their inventory. Nobody would admit to it, but obviously we see the information. Buried in inventory. No idea how they're going to do it other than we'll retail our way out of it. Yes, you will. Sure you will. I know. Um, But when you don't, you get to the block, and now you're sitting there, and we watch the no-sale rates skyrocketing, skyrocketing. 
I'm not talking about on hamburgers, eight, nine thousand dollar cars, fifteen thousand dollar cars. Still bringing very good money as long as they look and act like a car until you try to get a check, and it goes into post sale for four hundred and eighty things that never, never, ever. See, in a bad market, everybody's looking for a way to get out. Buyer's remorse, even if you stole a car, looking for buyer's remorse to get out. In other words, these are all in, in, indicative of a, 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 a descending market where confidence is definitely not part of the, um, um, let's call it the modus operandi. What you wind up with is a, um, a, a lack of uh, people bidding on cars that don't have a uh, a, a, a reference that they've always used. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense to you, Sean? So guys, well, what's the solution? I'm going to tell you exactly what the solution is, the most beautiful thing in the history of the world. So we referred to Head Start. We referred to looking at hundreds of thousands of transactions over the decades. Here's what happens. My suggestion is, and what I believe is the solution for all dealers, retail and wholesale, is forget the last Two and a half years. Forget, forget it. Never occurred. Didn't happen. It didn't occur. Now, guys go, oh, geez, we're making more money F and I and whatever. That's good. Keep doing that. Keep keep that up. That's good. But when it comes to appraising, buying, and selling cars, let's go back to 2019 or 2018 or 2017 or 2016. Look at your look at your uh, results in those years, and you want to know what 2022 is? It's a mirror. We're mirroring what we did in 1917, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 2006. We're mirroring it. The only thing different is the average cost of vehicle is almost double. If our average cost of vehicle at the moment is 40G, it used to be 20G because we sold $100,000 cars, but we didn't sell 80 of them a week. You follow me? And as a result, the cost of inventory per unit inventory is way higher than it ever was. But the let's call it the everything else remains 2019. When you use these past two years of complete and utter never to return insanity and believe somehow or other it has any relevance to what we're doing today, you're going to continue to be a frustrated puppy. And, and you're going to wind up not bucking the, the uh, let's call it the tide, but drowning in the tide. That That's my personal point of view. All you got to do is go back to 2019 and start doing business. Well, how much should I pay? What they're worth. In other words, what's the point of talking about MSRP? You know, we went into this brain fart of MSRP for a couple of years where for the first time in my 50 years, it's, a, it's an irrelevant conversation, but all of a sudden it became relevant because you're getting 6,000 over MSRP. Well, that's not happening. Maybe on a few cars here and there, it's still happening, but it's not happening on every car. I mean, it was happening on cars you couldn't even stand to look at. It's happening on Hyundais and Kias and Range Rovers. The cars that never you could dream of talking about what the MSRP is. Um, and all of a sudden, we're going back to reality. Where cars depreciate, they never, ever, ever go up in value. Check the last two and a half years. And then just take that out of your conversation and your brain and start doing business. You don't have to think about it. It's simple as pie. Does that make any sense to you, Sean? Because, boy, it makes all the sense in the world to me. Just eliminate the last since March the 15th of 2000. Take it out of your head. Didn't it get, didn't happen. I hope it's still in the bank. I hope you got an extra $14 million sitting in there after tax. I hope that's the case. It's a beautiful thing. Um but don't act like it's going to happen again because you're going to start digging into that 14 mil and start passing it out as favors, you know, like a party favor. Uh, it ain't going to work out. That's that's hmm. my uh, moral for the day. Wonderful. Very needed and very timely. Thank you, Bob. Have fun, everybody. See you.